Hello! So today we're going to talk about watercolor brushes. And the brushes that I just got in are a pair of Atelier Silver. I love these style of brushes. I mean, they are really useful as brushes and just really pretty as objects to have as well, which then draws you into wanting to paint more and all that other kind of stuff. So I've got an 80 5225S gold tacklon quill and then a 120 5225S gold tacklon quill, both silver ateliers. So it's going to open these up. If I can even figure out how to open them up. If I can see where I put my scissors. <laughs> so I'll do this without hurting them. So part of what I want to talk about here is how brushes are constructed. And there's a plastic cover on here, which is for the tips protection during shipping so it doesn't get all mushed. But this plastic cover, of course, has to come off and it just pulls right off. And then there is, well, let me take the other one off first before I talk about this. All right, and then there is also a plastic sheath on here, but you can see that it is marked for removal. It is just, again, a packing piece of material. It is not meant to be on there while you use the brush. And you peel that off. All right, where's the other dotted lines? Oh, that one has. All right, well, I'll deal with that later when my hands are a little less shaky. This is one of the challenges of having shaky hands is dealing with things like this. All right. But anyway, the purpose of the wire wrap is to crimp the wood down around the brush head to hold the brush head inside the wood area. So you've got the wood brush firmly attached to the, or the handle, firmly attached to the bristles, and then the wrap holds this in so that this is one nice solid piece. So when you're doing your brushing, everything is moving together. And let's take a look at a Neptune brush that I have. And it's the same concept, although just a little more simply done. You've got the wooden handle, you've got the brush head, and then you've got the metal crimp, which firmly holds the wooden brush handle to the brush head. And I'm showing this in comparison with something I was really disappointed by, by our Artegria. <laughs> They came with brushes that had what looked like to be this kind of metal crimps to hold it together. And they had what looked like to be the plastic pieces, which is just a protective while you're tra transporting it. But it turns out if you try to remove that plastic thing, there is nothing at all holding the bristles to the wooden handle except a piece of plastic. This wire wrap is sillily decorative. It's under the plastic and it does nothing at all. So its purpose is just to look like it's doing something when it's doing nothing at all. And when this is a free floating piece of bristle down with a wooden handle and just a piece of plastic, which, you know, plastic is malleable and stuff. So you're not getting the same kind of control when you're holding it. And when I realized this, I was just incredibly disappointed with that brush system. So I highly recommend that you either get a solid piece of metal connecting the wooden brush head to the bristles, or you get the way that it's normally done, which is a wooden handle, the bristles going into the wooden handle, and then the metal crimps holding this down so that it holds the piece in place. This is what the metal crimps are supposed to be used for. They're supposed to be used as a connector tool to hold the handle to the brush. But anyway, back to this set of brushes. Brushes come with a protective layer on them to hold the shape of it and you need to rinse them out in water a little bit to be able to release that and get the brushes back to being usable as watercolor brushes. So 
So once you get that protective layer out, then they function the way that one would expect. But don't think that right out of the uh, gate they're going to be working like watercolor brushes. And there we go. I can feel it starting to soften up as I get that varnish out. It'd be easier if I was at a sink <laughs> and running this under water, but I don't want to do the video over at a sink. But it's getting mostly out. There we go. And you can feel it in your fingers when they loosen up and get that off. All right, so that one's done. This one is coming done. Well, here, I might as well just, now that this one is cleansed. And like I said, you can feel the goo as it comes out to know when it's nice and clean. And it'll clean off you know, in your first use or two anyway, so. We'll just leave that for a second. So it just so happens that I have here, I was just doing a test with some black watercolor paper. So I'll put that up. This is the black watercolor paper I was testing on. It happens to be by Stonehenge. And we'll put this over here. And this is a uh, Windsor Newton Cotman with some metallics. So, oh, that is just, like, that is so nice feeling. And it's very, you know, you get different sizes in here, but I really like these large sturdy ones. My hands are a bit shaky, as you probably noticed. So this gives me a nice firm control. The connection to the bristles is nice and solid. So I don't know, let's go with uh, silver. And that is just so pretty. Has a very smooth feel to it. So I'm very happy with the brushes. And the ones I got are for larger paintings. Again, with my hand condition, I am working towards moving towards larger stuff now and more abstract designs. But I love everything about this brush. I love the way that it works. I love the colors. I love the feel of it in my hand. And I love the flow of it over paper. So let me know if you have any questions at all about these silver atelier brushes. I suppose it could be atelier. atelier. <laughs> I, I, uh, says it was made in China, but you know, you never know if something has a French origin. So these are the 80 5225S and the 120 5225S silvers. And you can see the tips, the beautiful shape to them. So let me know if you have any questions.